I want everybody to stand, if you can. <clears throat> we are, we're at the last day of this year. As it's already been, uh, uh, it's already been said. <clears throat> as I look across this room, some of you, you've had heartbreak. Some of you have had an incre incredible uh, year this year. But whatever, whatever kind of year you've had, today I want to talk about winning the day and how we win each day. A lot of you have goals, right? Goals are great. A lot of those are on yearly timelines. And it's hard to reach those goals without winning the day that you're in to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. Today, though, some of you have had rough, a rough year. Some of you in this room, it's, 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 been, it's been incredible. Sometimes it's so-so. Some it's -so. But I believe, I believe that Jesus is present in this room right now. And I believe that it doesn't matter what kind of year, what kind of loss that you've had, that you've experienced, I believe that we serve a God, that we serve a creator that will meet each and every need that you have. But it's up to us. It's up to us to win the day. The day, be it present in his presence. This, this, uh, what I want you to do is I just want you to raise your hands real quick. And I want to pray a prayer of blessing over each and every one of you. Lord, I pray right now. God, in this warm room, <laughs> I pray right now, God, that you would show up and show out right now in everybody's life in this room right now. God, whatever it's been, heartbreak, God, whatever it's been, lost, God, no job, God, whatever the case may be, God, Lord, bad, a bad diagnosis, Lord God, whatever it is, God, I pray that right now, God, that you would show up and show out right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray blessing, I pray anointing, God, over this house in, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. You can be seated. <laughs> Welcome to Church Alive. If you're online, uh, I'm Pastor Scooter, missions pastor, outreach pastor here at Church Alive. I'm excited today. Over the past several weeks, um, God's really been stirring me up on, on, on a message today. And it's all about winning the day. It's all about him really saying, will you really? Will you really? And you're going to hear that. You're going to hear that statement, that question here in just a little bit. But will you really? I want to ask you, will you really win the day? There's been a lot of loss, right? There's been a lot of wins. But I, what God wants us to do is each and every day that we wake up to the time that we go to bed at night, he wants us to win. But I want to show you. I want to show you actually how to do that. And it's very easy, really. Just really getting back to the basics. Getting back to the basics. But winning the day, Emmett Smith, one of the, the, actually, one of the best running backs ever. He didn't go to a college that I liked, but, but that doesn't defeat the purpose that he was the best. He's the NFL rushing leader of all time by 2,000 yards, right? Go look it up. Google it right now. The top 10 is not even playing anymore, right? So he had 18,000, Emma Smith, 18,355 yards of rushing. That's a lot of yards. I think that's like 10.4, 10.5 miles, right? And so, but it's not, it wasn't easy. Every yard came at a cost because you have over 300 pound men Chasing you. And if you get past them, there's guys that's over 200 pounds chasing you just a little faster. But regardless, each and every day, he pursued a goal. Each and every day, man, he, he had purpose. He had a plan, right? It, 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 those 10.4 10 miles came at a cost over the, uh, um, I don't know how many years that he actually played but all-time rushing leader. So that's the goal. That, that, that's, the, that, that, that's the title. He's all-time rushing leader. 
They asked him what his success was, and he said it was the, basically the 24-hour rule. You know, I had time, to, time to, to, to celebrate, had time to mourn a loss, had time to heal. But the next day, I had to get back to the basics. It never ends. See, the 24-hour rule, the 24-hour rule is, is, is not nothing new. It's actually the, Lord, the, the famous prayer of all time. It's the Lord's Prayer. See, the Lord's Prayer is three-dimensional. It helps us void the past, navigate the present, and negotiate the future. See, Jesus prayed past tense. He said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He prayed future tense. He said, lead us, lead us not into temptation. And finally, Jesus prayed present tense. Give us this day our daily bread. See, he didn't say give us yesterday. Yesterday is dead. He didn't say give us tomorrow. Tomorrow's not even here. It's today. So in order for us, church, in order for us to do what our plan, to, to, to work out our purpose and our plan of, and, and our future, we have to be about today. We have to be present today. A day equals 86,400 seconds, 1,440 minutes, and all that comes up to 24 hours. You have 24 hours in a day to make the right decisions. You have 24 hours in a day to live out the plan and purpose God had put in front of your life. But sometimes circumstances, sometimes situations derails us from winning the day. But God wants us to be present. There's a lot of wins in the Bible. As I was going through a lot of of the wins that people went through, I also know that there were losses that they experienced as well. But one of those is the disciples. The disciples won the day. And the reason I know they won the day is because when Jesus went to each and every one of them, and said, come follow me, every single one of them immediately left their jobs, left their to-do list, left their hobbies, and followed Jesus right then. Immediately. That's a win. See, winning the day consists of obedience. We, as believers... We have to be obedient to his call. When he says, come, we got to come, right? He says, go, we've got to go. Disciples did that. Winning the day takes obedience. Abraham won the day. Abraham, when God said, take Isaac to the mountain, take Isaac to the mountain to put a sacrifice what, can you imagine being a, a dad? I, I am. I've, I've, Isaiah, I was actually thinking, if he ever told me to take Isaiah to the mountain for, to, to, to sacrifice, that would be a struggle. As a father, that would be a struggle. But what God was doing there was testing his faith, seeing how faithful he is to the father. It was a choice that tested his faith and it tested his fatherhood. But Abraham won. He won the day. See, winning the day takes faith. Moses, when God told told Moses to lead the people to the promised land, Moses had a choice. Moses had a choice that day. He seen the obstacle of the Red Sea in front of him, in front of him, and then there's an army chasing. See, in our lives. No matter what's going on in your life, it takes obedience to get where God needs you to go. Right? Amen? Amen. Am I by myself in here? So when you take the step of faith, when you take the step of faith, God moves mountains. Things that you see or cannot see, he moves. So when Moses obeyed and said, God, I will, The Red Sea parted. 
right? And the army was gone. The army was washed. It takes obedience. Moses, with Moses, it took courage. So winning the day not only takes obedience, but it takes courage. It takes courage to stand upon your faith. It takes courage to stand upon the word of God. It takes courage to do these things in order to win your day. Paul. Paul won the day. Paul lost a lot of days, but Paul won a lot of days. Being able to go take some teams to, to Rome, Italy, we have actually been in the cell, in the prison where Paul was a couple different times. Actually in the dungeon. So as I'm down there, as I'm down in that dark, gloomy, cold basement with a hole right there above the head, in the, in the, in the ceiling, where I guess things were just, they, they, they um, lowered him and lowered food or whatever. But just thinking how he won the day in this dungeon. See, what happened is the word that was in his heart. See, a lot of times we lose because we don't apply what we know. We know God. We know what God can do for our life, but it's applying that to our everyday life. Paul, chained, bound. What does he do? He worships. He worships. He sings to God. So as I'm down there in that dungeon, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, would I have done the same thing? Winning the day takes boldness. Daniel, every single day, Daniel would pray and be consistent in his prayer. No matter the circumstance, no matter the cost, Daniel was faithful. Daniel was fervent. Daniel, uh, he, wanted, he wanted God to hear him. And he, didn't, he, he would do it at all cost. And God even saved him in the lion's den. Daniel won the day by being consistent in, your pray, in his prayer. Are you today, let me ask you, are you consistent with your prayer? Are you consistent with your worship? David, full of courage. He was loyal. He was a great leader. He was a warrior. God called him to defeat a giant. Just like God calls each and every one of us to defeat a giant, but he doesn't call us to defeat a giant on our own. He calls us to defeat a giant in his presence. He gives us the power. He gives us the authority. Amen? David, warrior, defeating the giant that's right there in front of him. See, it takes heart. These are things, these are characteristics it takes in order to win the day. Jesus. Hmm. I could go on and on about Jesus. But Jesus, each and every day, loving the disciples, ministering to disciples, ministering to whoever he came into contact with. And at the very end, he was beaten. He was ridiculed. He was spit upon. And in the midst of all that, he still showed love. See, winning the day takes perseverance. Today, as you look back on your uh, uh, 2023 and you think about each day or the month or all the circumstances that, that, that came about, the loss that came about, how many days did you win? And how many days did you lose? It's okay if you've lost, but don't stay in that loss. Amen? Personal goals met. Personal goals not met. Great doctor's report. Not so good doctor's report. Great job. No job. No anxiety. Raging anxiety. Didn't lose anyone. Heartbreak of losing someone. Marriage is amazing, 
Marriage is struggling. Had a great attitude, not so great attitude. Amazing prayer times, no prayer times. I share my faith a lot. I share my faith little. I want you to fill in the blank on how those days went and what we can do starting today. See, 2024 is here tomorrow, but that, that, see, that doesn't matter. It's today. What are you doing today? See, the problem is we, we're not promised tomorrow. Sometimes we live for tomorrow when we need to live for today. We need to live like this is the last day that we have on God's creation. What am I going to do? What am I going to live out? What, 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 who's that next person, Malachi, that I can talk to about Jesus? Psalm 118, 24 and 25 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And 25 says, save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. I want to tell you how you're successful each and every day. See, success is doing it Jesus' way. See, when you, when you do things Jesus' way, you win the day, Right? Even though there's going to be, there's going to be some uh, thorns coming to your side, there's going to be some jabs, there's going to be some punches, knockdowns. See, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, he wants to break you down so that you get your focus off and get your focus off his plan and purpose. Pastor Mark Batterson says 75% of us will fail our New Year's resolutions within the first month. Congratulations. <laughs> He's talking about all of us. Right? I know there's some that's, you, you're going to do it. And I say do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Goals are great. But when the goal today that will lead you to tomorrow to win again. Right? Psychologist Matthew Killingsworth says the average person spends 47% of their time thinking about something other than what they're doing in the present moment. See, a problem a lot of times is that we're not present in the moment in order to win the moment. God's wanting you to be present. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about him being present because he's always present. He's here now. He's going to be here tomorrow. He'll be in your car when you, get, when you get there, wherever you go. But will you be with him? we got to win the day, guys. Key ingredients to win your day. This is going to be earth-shattering, okay? Please take notes. <laughs> Log these in. Earth-shattering, all right? Number one, to win your day, you got to love Jesus. you got to love Jesus. you got to love Jesus with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul. That is the first and greatest commandment in the Bible. That defeats anything else. We have to love God with everything, right? That's Matthew 22, 37, 39. The next one, whoo, the next one's hard. If you can't love, if you can't love God, you're surely not going to love others. But to win the day, you got to love God. To win the day, you have to love others. Others can be, whoo, <laughs> whoo, son. But I'm called to love. I may not love their actions, but I love the person. Right? I care. I care about where that person is going to spend eternity, George. I care about that. And he wants you to care about that. Love others. Love Jesus. The next one is pray daily. D don't pray when, when it's crisis mode. Pray each and every day. Sorry to spit on you. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all. Everybody say all. all. In all circumstances. Mm. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Right? Love God. Love others. Pray daily. 
Hey. Next one's worship. It's worship daily. You know one thing they don't let me do up here? Just sing a solo. <laughs> they want me to sing solo. <laughs> Nobody hears. But see, I'm on the stage now. Nobody can say anything. No, I'm not going to sing. I promise. But when I'm in, man, wherever I'm at, if you see a red Jeep going down and some guy's going, he's beating on his steering wheel, it's not because I'm, it's road rage. It's just because I am into a worship song. I do have my eyes open. I'm watching. But I am into the moment. I'm loving Jesus in the shower, wherever I may be. I always want to have Jesus' name upon my lips. And not only upon my, in my heart, my mind, my heart, but upon my lips, but I want to proclaim the name of Jesus. And wherever I go, wherever I go, I want people to know about Jesus. I want people to know that he is my savior. He is my rock. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. Who am I found in? I'm found in him. So worship daily. Next one is Read. Read your word daily. That worship was Luke 4, 8. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Read your word, 2 Timothy 2, 2, 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. These are some basics, guys. I know it's earth-shattering. But all right, just ask yourself, and you don't have to raise your hand, but am I doing these things? Do I love God? Do I love others? Am I reading his word? His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's, 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 it's active. It's living. Am I worshiping? Am I praying? Sometimes when I, not sometimes, but on mission teams, I always go around and we'll take, we'll take a list of prayer needs. And then I'll say, okay, I need you to pray for this and you pray for this and you pray for this. And like, it's like a deer in headlights. <laughs> Me pray? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be magical. You're just speaking the name of Jesus over these prayer needs. Right? That's, it, it, it's, 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 it's very simple and very easy. Just we're going to pray, and we're going to believe God to move mountains. See, I believe in, in this room, there's a lot of faith in this room. As I look across this room, there's a lot of faith. And there's a lot of, you know what I believe? I don't know if you do or not, but I believe there's a lot of mountains about to be moved in Church Alive and in you and in our community, in our region, and in this world. You can take it to the bank. They ain't open today, but, you know. Because see, when the enemy tries to attack, you will be ready. You will be standing, standing firm on the word of God, and you're ready, saying no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. See, instead of the enemy putting you on notice, you need to put the enemy on notice. Each and every day that you wake up and you put your feet on that ground, you proclaim the word of God over your family, over your job, over your community, over your church, over, over us. I covet your prayers. We covet your prayers. You pray. But the key thing is applying it. Apply what you know. The book of John, uh, Jesus demonstrates through the book of John how to win the day. And then Judas and Peter will show you how to lose the day. Okay? In a day, Jesus had supper and Passover with the disciples, and I got to hurry. Very intimate time before that everything that they did led up to the resurrection, uh, not the resurrection, but to, to the cross. Very intimate time with the disciples. And then as he got up off the, uh, uh, from the table and put his outer garment on, and one by one, he would wash the disciples' feet, one by one, even knowing, even watching Judas' feet, knowing that he was about to betray him, watching Peter's feet, knowing he was about to deny him. It's amazing. The picture of Jesus 
doing this, knowing what's about to happen. Jesus proclaims that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus proclaims or promises the Holy Spirit. Jesus is arrested. Jesus is beaten. Jesus is, is persecuted all in a day. As he goes up to be crucified, you know what he does? He still loves. So in order to win, win our day, we got to do it the Jesus way. Come on, somebody. Is it too hot in here? Do we need to turn the lights up? I'm about to come down. Jesus is phenomenal. Jesus is God and man all at the same time. He is the lion and the lamb all at the same time. This Jesus is powerful enough to raise the dead with a spoken word. So you don't need to worry if he loves and cares about your needs because he does. Today, if you hear nothing else I say, just know that Jesus loves you. He loves everything about you because he created you. Almighty God created each and every one of you. So he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Just be in his presence, right? Just be in his presence. So Jesus is calling us to a relationship with him each and every day of our life and not just when it's convenient. Jesus desires a relationship each and every day, not just when it's convenient. Jesus uh, says in Luke 12, 35 and 36, stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. Be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he knocks. For some, Jesus is knocking. He says, let me in. And for some, he's saying, let me back in. Peter, one of the 12, Peter, recognized leader among the disciples, a fisherman by trade, and he became a fisherman. Nicknamed the rock, not Dwayne Johnson. This is the first rock right here, okay? Symbolizing on this rock, I will build my church. Confess Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. He walked on water briefly. He played a key role in Acts 2. He preached a powerful sermon with thousands converted and were baptized. He was a part of healing and miracles and engaged in missionary work throughout the region. That's why I love him so. But in one moment, one moment shook him to the core. John 13, 36 and 38, Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. How many times have you said that? I know I have. God, I'll lay, God, I won't do that again. Get me out of this. I'll never do it again. Yeah, okay. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? See, that's my title. Will you really? And that's really what I want, want you to ask yourself. It's like Peter. Will you really lay down your life for Jesus? See, the first denial, when Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times, the first denial was a girl to a girl at the door in the courtyard. John, uh, that was John 18, 17. The second denial is to a servant girl by the fire in the courtyard. And the third denial is to a man by the fire in the courtyard as well. Peter's denials wasn't because he hated Jesus, but it came from fear of the, uh, uh, of the arrest and the, cru the crucifixion of Jesus. Peter was deeply remorseful. And this was an experience that, that, that served as a lesson in humility and the importance of relying on God's grace. Later on, it said that Peter wept bitterly. 
He was remorseful because of what he done. See, Peter denied the Lord, not out of, uh, 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 not out of, he wasn't wicked, but he was weak. He was very weak. Peter really loved Jesus. And I believe there's a lot of people in here that love Jesus. I think we just need to get back to the basics and do what God has called us to do each and every day in order to win. See, Luke 22, 31 and 32 is the same context as John 13, but it says in 31, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. Not only did the enemy, the Satan want to sift uh, and break down and shake up Peter's faith, but he also wanted to do that to the other disciples as well. That's why it says you, which is plural. He wanted to do that to all of them. But he said his name twice to really get his attention, to really get Peter's attention. Does Jesus have your attention today? Does he have your attention? Because if, if you've lost a lot in, in 2023, what's going to change in 2024? It's getting back to the basics, right? The sifting. The enemy wants to shake us. He wants to sift us each and every day. And sometimes he will use people to shake you up, right? Right? And to sift you, to really test you, test your attitude. Amen? He wants to break us down. But, but, but Jesus said, I want to I wanna strengthen you. I, want you to, I want you to have faith as small as a mustard seed. Because when you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains in your life. Acts 14, 22 says, strengthen the disciples and encourage them to remain true to the faith. I'm going to strengthen you, and I want you to be an encouragement to go to them, and I want you to strengthen them as well. Acts 14, 22 says, putting grit, the same, uh, uh, the same verse, but this is paraphrasing, putting grit in the lives of the disciples, urging them to stick with what they had begun to believe and not quit. Jesus didn't create a bunch of quitters. There's no quitter in this room. So if you're not a quitter, what are you? Come on, somebody. You're a winner. Say, I'm a winner. Those with faith. You ever seen a mustard seed? It's very small. So just faith as small as that can move a mountain. I think everybody in this room has that much faith. But sometimes we just let things come in the way and distract us and derail us from the purpose of God. See, our faith is not in ourself. Our faith is in Jesus. That faith gives life. That faith gives salvation. That faith is our hope. That faith is our plan. That faith is our future. That faith, that faith, that faith is our strength. Some of you may feel you're weak today. God wants to be your strength. God wants to be your rock. That faith, that faith heals. Wayne Gardner, that faith heals, brother. That faith delivers. That faith restores. That faith forgives see God asked the question to Peter not for God's benefit 
but for Peter's benefit. The same with Adam. Will you really? It made him really think. Because I believe that's why he had that remorseful moment where he wept and he wept. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for forsaking you. I'm sorry for denying you. See, when we go out this room, in that, out there is our little world. And in that little world, there's a lot of people that don't know Jesus. So in order to win our day, what we are called to do is be the light into the darkness, right? So when we walk out this room, just like last week, 260 families got food, got prayer, got hope at Pine Acres Community Center. 260 families. Some of you were there. Some of you have given. My whole point is that Jesus wants us to be his light. Jesus wants us to win the day. And this is that, that's how we win the day. When we're focused and determined to do it his way and not our way. Let me ask you this. Will we? Will we pay the price no matter what? Will we continue when others leave? Will we continue to march when things get hard? Because can I tell you, I'm praying for an amazing 2024, but I know there's going to be obstacles. Don't kid yourself. But when the obstacles come my way, I know that if I'm praying and if I'm worshiping and I'm, if I'm developing my relationship with my father, then that's going to help me get through the obstacle. I want everybody to stand. Here's an application. Winning the day. It's one of my favorite songs right now. This is how you win. Be careful, my water. If you curse me, then I will bless you. If you hurt me, I will forgive. And if you hate me, huh, then I'm going to love you. I choose the Jesus way. If you're helpless, I will defend you. And if you're burdened, I'll share the weight. And if you're hopeless, let me show you. There's hope in the Jesus way. I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. He wore my sin and I would gladly wear his name. He is the treasure. He is the answer. If you strike me, I will embrace you. And if you kill me, my home, uh, I, I forgot a verse. And if you chain me, I'll sing his praise. And if you kill me, ha, huh, my home is heaven. What a place. What a place. But you know what? You don't have to wait to go to heaven because you can live out heaven right here in this moment each and every day. I know that just gets some of you excited. You're just ready to go conquer the world. Well, we need a church ready to conquer our world. We need a church ready to pray. We need a church ready to worship. We need a church ready to pursue his plan. Because I, can I tell you something right now? This out here, 
that's not about us. That's about our community. There's going to be lives changed. Changed here. I promise you. Believe it. Believe that God is going to move in your life starting right now. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Today you say, Pastor Scooter, I'm, I, I'm in this place and I don't even know Jesus as my personal Savior. But today... I want to make him my Lord. I want to make him my king today. This is how you win. This is how you win. If that's you in this place, you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I want you to raise your hand. Anybody in this room, we've got a lot of glare coming, but anybody in the room, So I trust that everybody in this room has accepted Jesus, loves Jesus, has, you have an amazing relationship, you're developing that relationship. Let me ask you this question. How many is ready to do 2024 the Jesus way? I want you to raise your hand all across this room. All across this room. Father, I pray right now that, God, we dedicate each and every day, starting right now, we're going to do everything that we do your way. Father, we thank you. God, I praise you. I honor you. And I pray right now, blessings in Jesus' name. With me, Father, we want to thank you for the preaching of your word. God, thank you for challenge and thank you for encouragement and thank you for reminders that you're faithful in the highs and in the lows, in the peaks and in the valleys. Lord, you're the same. And God, that you're never stopped or put out by the mistakes in our past, but God, you always have a plan and you always have purpose for your people. And so I ask today, Lord, that you would just put your your blessing on them. And Lord, I pronounce a blessing on them from number six, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and to give you peace now and throughout all 2024. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Church Alive.